I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I sure appreciate you joining with us. And today I'm just thrilled to have a, a, a good friend here, Brent Clark, who's come and been willing to share his story. And I think you're going to find it very fascinating. In fact, we're going to do probably two, two episodes with you, Brent, so because you've got so many different interesting aspects to your life and all. Where were you born? I was actually born in um, Utah. I was born in West Jordan oh. and lived there for six short years before my family moved to a small town in Wyoming, Lyman, Wyoming. Oh, well, and that's where I grew was up. Was your family, uh, was that a job related move? Or? It was a job related move. My um, dad had gone through the uh, police academy and became a law enforcement oh, officer really? and oh. uh, that brought us up to Lyman. So. Is he still doing that? Up he is. He actually just retired a couple weeks ago. So. He probably knows my cousin uh, or my nephew, I guess. So the ACs, or I don't know if you know them no, at all. No, so. <laughs> anyway, they are out of Evanston, but yeah, so. yeah. And I used to do credit unions in that area between. I guess that's between Evanston and uh, Rock Springs, and Rock right? Rock Springs, right? Yeah. yeah, Trona, Trona related credit unions that were up there yes. in Wyoming. I used to do them. So, uh, was, were your fa was your family uh, Mormon at this point? They were. Uh, my uh, dad was a convert from um, when he was nine years old, and my mom oh, really? was born and raised in the church. And yeah. so, when I came along, I was <laughs> born into the church and raised up through oh, it. How many kids did they have? They had four. I was the oldest. Oh, uh, you were okay. two younger brothers and then a baby sister. Okay, and uh, they were married in the temple. They were eventually, yes. or, yes. or were. And well, that's neat. So we're just active, kind of normal. How's Lyman? Is that a, is that predominantly? Lyman is, is there a, a, lot of LDS a there? very Mormon community. Oh, is um, it? Uh, Lyman makes up three um, towns that make up what's known as the Bridger Valley. Okay. They're in southwest Wyoming, and a lot of Mormons. Um, huh? Yes, based on a population between the three towns of around three to four thousand there are ten wards or congregations oh, my there goodness. so yeah it's probably a good 85 to 90 percent mormon wow were there any christians that you know of there there are now um at the time you know i was raised in the mormon church and so i didn't have a whole lot of exposure to you know anything outside of the mormon church okay um, i knew a few friends and that growing up who yeah. weren't mormon but didn't really know a whole lot about them or what yeah. they did. So did you do the normal thing? I guess you went to primary and... I did. I went through primary, a deacon, a 12, became a deacon, uh, got the priesthood, uh, yeah. passed the sacrament, uh, you know, went up through the ranks. Just and lived the life. Lived huh? the life, Did yes. you do seminary? Did I you? did do seminary. Uh, yeah. Did four years of it, graduated seminary. Oh my goodness. Um, Ever have any questions that came up in your youth there like that that either bothered you or you ever thought about? You know, um, growing up I didn't. I was raised, you know, very strict, uh, you know, in the Mormon culture and yeah. didn't have any questions. If I did, um, you know, they were quickly put aside with, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. And Yeah, that's, um, that's the way I was. Did yes. you have a testimony, do you think? of? I did, very much so. I was uh, very um, strong in my faith of you know, the Mormon church, and from yeah. a very young age, I, you know, I wanted to know for myself if, you know, the church was true, if Joseph Smith was a true prophet, if the Book of Mormon was true, and, you know, so, um, you know, I was raised that you need to come to that conviction of your sure. own, and you need to, yeah. you know, find that out of yourself, and, you know, so I did, I went and read the Book of Mormon, and I prayed about it, and I felt I had a strong answer and a conviction <laughs> of myself, and... Just knew it was true. Exactly, right? with all my heart, I knew it was true. Oh, gosh. I remember a couple of missionaries came to my priest quorum when I was a 
a priest and they presented their flannel board thing of Joseph Smith and the, the testimony that I had of Joseph Smith was, you know, just, it was strong for me at least. Uh, I just believed with yeah. all my heart that it was true and it sounds like you had that same experience. I did, huh? with all my heart, like I said, I mean, it was, yeah. it was my life. Yeah, and your brothers and, or I didn't, we had four, you had three siblings, I guess. Was Correct. Brothers and Two sister? brothers and a sister. Okay, maybe you said that. Um, so anyway, so you get uh, through high school, what, uh, what happens? Well, I uh, went through high school, and you know that my next step, as is custom with the Mormon culture, is set out for a two-year mission. Okay. And I uh, put in my papers. Uh, I had a little bit of waiting time before I was able to go. I graduated from high school in um, that that May, and wasn't able to go until the next February. But I um, was. Was this when you were nineteen? Type. I mean, yes, this was eighteen, the, nineteen years the 18 old. Eighteen hadn't come along, had it? That changed. No, no, it was yeah, nineteen, 19 at that time. And, yeah. uh was originally called to uh, Caracas, Venezuela. Oh my goodness! And went to the missionary training center in Provo and. Oh, you did. Learned, so learn 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 Spanish. Learned Spanish to you know some degree. Yeah. And, yeah. and went down to Venezuela and was only there for. Um, a short time, and what the happened? mission was closed down due to violence. Oh, um, yeah. You know, the time I was down there, we were robbed uh, three different times at Gunman Knife Point as a missionary. And was that scary? It, it was scary. Um, <laughs> you had to have a gun pointed at you or a knife pulled on you. Is, you know, never a... I guess I'm not familiar with it. About what time frame was this? Uh, very early on, this was 2004. I was, but Venezuela was yes. in uh, turmoil, I guess. And yes, the church and decided to pull the missionaries out. Pull the missionaries out. out and so where, where did I you was, end uh, up? I came home um, originally for about two weeks while they were reassigning me and going through all the paperwork and was reassigned to go down to Orlando, Florida. Uh, oh, to okay. finish up my mission down and there. And this is where the story is going to become very interesting. Yes. <laughs> so tell us who your first companion was. So my first companion was Michael Wilder, who <laughs> I know has been on the show. And yeah, um, for anyone who watches is familiar with Adam's Road yeah. and their yeah. ministry they have. But he was my first companion on the mission. And I, throughout you know the whole two years, I now, had many long? times to serve around him and the other members. How long was he, uh, how long had he been out? He had been out for six months at that point. Okay. Um, so. Now, was he was he and and you were you called to Spanish speaking? Yes, missions? we were originally, originally, and I had had you know a little bit of break in it, and I had made the decision that you know I wanted to go English speaking oh, um, okay. to finish out my mission. I and, that, I, and that's what you did. You have that choice, or were you? Supposed? I was given that choice just okay. due to the fact that I was now six months into my mission. I hadn't really had a chance to serve at all, and you know I. I wanted yeah. to get right into the work and yeah. you know start doing, you know, doing my duty, and so okay. I thought the best way to do that would be English. So. so you spend this time with Micah, and and of course at this point you're both just gung ho kind we, of mission. We, we are. Right? We're ready to go out and change the world, <laughs> at least in Orlando, Florida area. So I'll be darned. So um, so tell us what 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 happens. Your companions with him, and of course, eventually you get transferred. And right, get transferred, stuff. and uh, never was able to serve with him again. But yeah. served around That's him. That's unusual was, to ever right, be to reassigned the reassigned. same person. Yeah, but he was my zone leader at one point, and oh. um, also got to serve around Joseph Warren, who is also. A a member part of the of, band. Part yeah. of the band. And now you also knew then the other one, Steve K. Steve K. had uh, returned from his mission, but oh. he had come back to visit at one point um, okay. during our time serving. And Jay, and so Jay I got to meet him, and I met Jay working at the hotel, which they yeah. you know, still work at. And now you wouldn't have known the other Wilders, though, at this point. Matt. And... I did meet Matt. He um, oh. as well came down to uh, visit, and okay. so I was briefly introduced to him, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I knew them all from, you know, early on. And okay. Of course, there was no disruption at this point because this was early on, I guess, early enough in Micah's mission to... Right. In fact, uh, Micah was one of my mentors, uh, being my first companion. He course. was yeah. he, he was a hero of mine. I mean, he, his testimony and, um, you know, we laugh about it now looking back on it, but I have videos of, you know, footage that I would make to send home to my family sure. of us on the missionary, um, in the missionary field. Before the internet. Right. Or before you. And in one of these, I, I still have this uh, uh, part where, you know, I interviewed 
Micah um, to my parents, and he bore his testimony of the Mormon Church, and you know he <laughs> he he was touched, and you know yeah. he got all emotional, and you know he he was my hero. I I looked up to him, and you know wanted to be as strong as he was in his testimony. What did you think of Jesus at this point in your life? You know, it, it's kind of funny because um, you know now looking at it. There's this conception with Christians when they look at Mormons and they'll say, well, Mormons aren't Christians. And, you know, Mormons, you know, immediately get up in arms in that and say they are. Because, you know, as a Mormon, you, you believe in Jesus. It is the you Church know, of Jesus Christ exactly. of Latter-day Saints. And yeah. you know the stories. I mean, the Mormons have the Bible. Yeah. And, you know, whether what they believe or don't believe out of it um, is up for debate. But they do have the stories. Um, they do believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They sure. believe he came down and, yeah. you know, had his ministry here on the earth and right. was crucified and resurrected in three days. And so you do have um, the background on Jesus as far as believing in Jesus. Right. But... It, it's a different way of believing because as a Mormon, you're under the understanding that what Jesus did and his ultimate sacrifice on the cross wasn't enough to, for salvation. Right. You know, he he paid the cost and he did all this stuff. but In the ultimate, Garden of Gethsemane. Right, and it didn't even too. take place on the cross according right. to the LDS. Right. It took place in the Garden. But, you know, once all that was done, the responsibility and ultimately our salvation still fell on us. Right. We're, it's still our, well, the third article of faith, we believe that through the atonement of Christ, all mankind may be saved by obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. Correct. So and we still have to do it ourselves. Exactly. And in yeah. Second Nephi, um, again, it states oh. that uh, we believe that um, we are saved by grace after all we can do. Yeah. So the grace doesn't kick in until yeah. the works and, you know, what's placed well, in us. And, and that's why you go on missions and that's why you pay your tithing and you do all that stuff. And, exactly. And yeah. so, you know, my, my relationship with Jesus was there. Um, but what I found... In a Mormon In a concept. Mormon yeah. concept. He was exactly. your elder brother. Exactly. And he brother. was... Uh, he was one of God's spirit children. Exactly. Brother of Satan. And yes. Yeah. And, and as a Mormon, you know, you go through and you're seeking that relationship with Jesus. You, yeah. you want that, you know, that relationship with him. And to some degree you can get it, but there's always a barrier. There's always a wall I found that always prevents you from getting to that relationship with him. Because according to the, you know, the Elias belief, you are your salvation is merited upon your works yeah and you know we know that no man is worthy i mean everyone sins everyone you know falters and so that alone keeps you from that relationship with him <clears throat> because no matter how much you may do it's never enough it's never perfection yeah. and so in his eyes you're never as good as you could be <laughs> and i think that kind of keeps a barrier between does, you in that relationship it? yeah because there's always that guilt or shame or exactly or a, oh I've disappointed God again you know or I you know when we sin which we will all sin right so. okay so you go through the, your mission anything happened particular uh, up until toward uh, so uh, my my mission was actually where I first started um, kind of questioning. Really? Um, my beliefs in the Mormon Church, and granted, not, aside from the Wilders, I'm assuming. Yes, and and definitely not to the degree that you know Micah went through. Um, but what kinds of things would bother you? Well, you know, as you're raised and brought up in the Mormon Church, you're given a pretty basic faith, and you know, it's not till later on in life that you know a lot of the deeper doctrines start to come out, yeah. and you start to learn a little bit more about them. And that's what happened on my mission. You know, as I said, we were gung ho. We were ready to go out and, you know, <laughs> yeah. do the best we could. And so, sure. you know, part of that was studying and being prepared. And, you know, I wanted to have all the answers to when, you know, these people would question me on certain issues of my faith. And Did they bring up things then that you had to deal with? Absolutely. They would, I mean, they would bring up things that, such as polygamy and, uh, you know, 
why would the church fall away and you know joseph smith and you know all sorts of different issues the you know the blacks with the priesthood mm -hmm. is yeah. a common one so i wanted to have all the answers and so started digging and the deeper I dug, the more it brought up questions of my own and, mm. you know, started me pondering and, you know, <laughs> is, is this really all that, you know, I've been brought up to believe it is. Okay. And this all happens before, well, we all know those of us that are aware of Adam's Road and Micah's story, we know that he eventually gets up when he's got two weeks left um, and shares his testimony, really, of Jesus, I guess. And you were in the audience. I was in the audience. I was one of the missionaries sitting down there when he gave his final departure. So tell us about that. I had. A, I was nearing the end of my mission as well. I was oh, actually really? six weeks behind him. Oh. Um, so I was just on the tail end as well. And I mean, did everybody's mouth drop or jaw you know, drop? Or did anybody would, sense what was going on? You would think that would be the reaction is everyone's mouth would drop and you know what what just happened? What did he just say? But the way he presented it was um, you know looking back on it, it was truly moved by the Spirit of God. I mean he was touched and you know that was his moment that God was using him as a tool um, for so many of us that were sitting out there and it was presented in a way that you know, we really didn't have a full understanding of what was being said. Um, Do you think the mission president understood? I think the mission president understood he, full well. He what knew was exactly going on. what exactly, was coming. Exactly. Yes. Across. Okay. Um, but the rest of us, I mean, I can I can appreciate that. You I know. mean, the majority of us sitting down there in the audience were in tears at his testimony and Serious. the things he was saying. So, and it wasn't until later on that you know you start to put it together and think about what he had really mm. said and. Well, he's so dynamic, and, and he has such a passion for what's happened to him. Right. Of course, God knew that and was going to use him. Exactly. So you listen, and then six weeks later, I guess, did, did were you impacted immediately there with him? or was I, I wasn't. Um, you know, I had heard a few days after that, you know, word spread around the mission. That he got that sent he home. he had got sent home. And no one, at, at that point, I didn't even know why. Oh, um, but he had been his own leader. He had been his like. own leader. He, he was uh, an assistant or anything. No, was not an his assistant. Own leader. But yeah, I didn't know why he had got sent home. I just heard that he had. I, I had heard rumors that you know he had lost faith and had turned apostate. And Were turned you against the that? I, I didn't believe it. Um, you know, knowing what I knew of Micah. Yeah. Um, no way. I couldn't <laughs> fathom that that yeah. he had turned that way. But did you sense when you listened to that that he had turned Christian? So to, I mean, the way we're talking about Christian Mormon, but that he had become a Christian? Not that he had become a born again Christian. Um, okay. I had gained the sense that he had a, a new relationship with Jesus and, yeah. um, you know, the way that he perceived things. But as far as, you know, born again Christian, leaving the Mormon church, that was not even on the radar there. No. <laughs> Not at all. Okay, so what happens to you? You come home after six weeks? So I come home. And... Um, I, you know, come home after six weeks later, and, you know, I go back to my hometown and, you know, fall back into, you know, the Mormon lifestyle. Yeah. And um, at this point, like I said, for my mission, you know, my faith has started to, you know, been rocked a little bit. Now, did you ever bring any of the questions up to your dad? or? I didn't. Um, I... Uh, or not any, at that time. Or anybody else. No, it, it was such a, it's such a sensitive topic to go to yeah. uh, when you start questioning your faith in the LDS Church. And um, as we know, coming out of the Mormon Church is a very hard thing to do. Yeah. And so when you're on the beginning stages of that, that's a very frightening thing to do. And Did you start studying other stuff or even more I, than, you probably didn't have that much uh, resources in on your mission, did you, to, to no, study polygamy? No, not a whole and lot. And it blood. more turned so that I just fell away from religion altogether and stopped oh. going to church and, you know, kind of distanced myself completely. Still in Lyman? Right. Well, that and, must have made mom and dad thrilled. Yes, and, you know, I went through the I went through the motions and that, you know, I would go to church while I was there. And oh. uh, later on, I moved away and, um, you know, started, you know, my own jobs and that. And yeah. uh, started my own life. And that's where I really, you know, stopped going altogether. Oh. And... Did you did you read anything particular though that you that kind of 
were you reading anything? I guess I wasn't reading point. anything, Sorry. but I will say the the one thing that really got me, and this was what kind of started the whole process with uh, me coming out of the church, was a question was sparked in my mind, and that was, you know, throughout the history of um, the Mormon Church, yeah, um, there's only been this one little section of time uh, from Joseph Smith until the present where the full gospel has been on the earth. And, you know, you even look back in the days when Jesus came and established the church. Um, you know, you're not taught about, you know, temple attendance or doing endowments or baptisms for the dead. In the Bible. <laughs> so that wasn't all there even then. Right. And so, you know, it's a Mormon belief that anyone who hasn't been through the Mormon church, who hasn't accepted it, will have that chance in the next life. You know, the whole purpose behind, you know, baptisms for the dead right. is for that purpose. And my question was, if nobody but the time from 1820 until now had that opportunity, Just this and the group. rest of history and humanity <laughs> was in the dark, and they're all just going to be, well, after the fact, and once we get into the second life and all that, then what was the purpose of it all? I mean, why would God... Seem so limited. Yeah, seem yeah. so limited to that small section of time where the rest of the time, you know, we had, you know, the prophets and all that, but the fullness of the gospel wasn't there. Did and, you, did you, my answer to that then as a Mormon would have been, well, that's all, what we're going to do during the millennium. Right. All these good people are going to be resurrected and as they come along, all of us missionaries will start preaching the gospel, the Mormon gospel to them and... Is right. that, did you understand that? Or? I understood that, and yeah. um, you know, but, but again, still, that little that yeah, was a little well, seed that got planted. Eighteen twenty, <laughs> back to the beginning of time. You know, that's such a huge space of time. That why wasn't God at work then? Yeah. And why wasn't His church established then? I mean, why, why establish this whole world and then? Well, we've got this going, but really 90% of it's going to be done on the end. Yeah. So and especially just re, re restored all by one person basically. Right. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Who they believe that Jesus didn't even restore it. I mean, yeah. to its fullness. Did you ever express any of your doubts though to your folks or I didn't. Did they I just they just did. assumed you they were just good at I was doing good. Um oh. And you, and you didn't show anything else, I guess. Didn't show anything else. Uh, like I said, until I moved away and yeah. um, had a little contact with them. A funny story. I was actually uh, at one point um, living away from them, and I wasn't attending church and all that. But they thought I was. Yeah. And my mom had called me one Sunday, and she goes, "Well, how was church?" And you know, so I kind of talked about, you know, who was, uh, who were the speakers were and, you know, what they talked you about. Just and making it, it up. up. Yeah, just off the top of my head. And oh, she cuts that's... me off and she goes, well, it was Fast Sunday. Which, oh, obviously, Fast testimonies. Sunday, there are no speakers. Right. It's testimony meeting. And so I was kind of <laughs> caught in the, you know, deer in the headlights. Uh, well, not not in the ward I was in. They they didn't do it. So, I mean, it was You should have used out, a state yeah. conference excuse. You know, right. oh, we had state conferences or something. Exactly. You know? So but, we had to move. So they started getting the hit as time goes on. I mean, yeah. they started figuring out that yeah. I probably wasn't as active as, you know, I had once been. Yeah. Well, I don't know how far to jump ahead. We've only got a few minutes left. But uh, well, g maybe give us um, a little flavor of... Uh, the Bible, for example, what did you think of the Bible and what do you think of it now? And you know, the Bible um, I had read uh, before my mission, but, oh, really? you know, as an LDS member, you are, exactly, and for the reason that, you know, the Mormon Church teaches, we believe that the Bible to be the Word of God as far as it's translated correctly. You know, plain and precious truths have been so removed So you can't from it. trust it. Huh? Exactly, yeah. you can't trust it. And so... It's kind of a side tool to yeah. the Book of Mormon. Yeah. It complements the Book of Mormon, which is where, you know, the Book of Mormon Doctrine, Covenants, Pearl of Great Prices, where emphasis is placed. Right. And the Bible just, you know, kind of helps affirm that. And so not a whole lot of, you know, thought went into the Bible. Yeah. Uh, more went into the Book of Mormon. And versus now, you know, I believe the Bible to be the Word of God. Um, 
you know, we are taught that, you know, the heavens and earth may pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Yeah, I never you know, understood that. Exactly. Before. To think that God would establish his word and let it become corrupted yeah. is um, just unfathomable. No, um, how I right. would have. You know, I look back now, and I'm like, how did I believe this? And, <laughs> and all this other stuff that got added to it, like you were saying, all correct, this marriage correct. for time and all eternity and baptisms for the dead. And right, which none, of, none are and, found of in the Bible. Right. It's, so yeah, it, it's a completely new understanding and a new love for the Word of God that I have now versus that I had then where... You know, it was, it, I mean, you, you have the quad as a Mormon, you have, they're yeah. all put together, but you, just you rarely visit that first section, which yeah. contains the Old and New Testament. And even when you do, you're seeing it through Mormon eyes. Correct, I mean, yes. I, I, I realize even those scriptures that we used to use as missionaries, have you kind of gone back and looked at those and see, well, what was I missing? I pulled that out of the Bible to read that to, to right. investigators. What did that really mean? Have you looked at some of those? Exactly, yes. And, you know, it, and you just it's, took them it's, out it's, of funny to, it's funny to go look back at them because you look at them now and <laughs> it, it, it doesn't even make sense almost. You I know, know, and it, it's so out of context. But at the time, you know, it makes perfect sense to you. I mean, I know it's, it. it's just... Well, we're naive. I know we're 19 and 20 and so on. Right. And we're just... Well, this is what we've been told our whole life, and we really haven't been we haven't been thinking right is basically probably what it is exactly and, yeah, I'm just kind of told what to say <laughs> you're going you're going through the motions you really are and you know i hate I hate even now to use the word brainwashed um yeah. but you know there's it, a sense it, it of is. that. Yeah. There is a sense of that. You, yeah. you know, I don't think it's so much that you're brainwashed, but more so, you know, as I explained, if you grew up your entire life drinking Pepsi, thinking Pepsi's so wonderful, it's the greatest soda, but you never tried Coke, I mean, you, you don't know any different. And so, you know, those of us who are born in the Mormon church, we just, we just don't know. You know we're not exposed to yeah. what else there is. Yeah, and I, I guess it's kind of a common thing. I won't say it too much, maybe, but we just... Most of us now know so much more about Mormonism right. as ex-Mormons than we ever did as Mormons, Correct. because we've been willing to look and and, and study. Yeah, it. and study and study it out, yeah. and you know, develop that faith for ourselves. Yeah. Well, there's so much more to your story, and we're going to get into that. But our first, our time's up actually yeah. for this. First it goes go by around. so quick. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I think how much? We just a couple. More seconds there, and okay, thirty seconds. Well, anyway, it's just it's just a delight. And how fun! Have you been communicating with Micah much? I do. I, I keep in touch with um, Micah and Joseph and Steve. And I know you've got something fun that uh, that you wrote to Micah. We'll, right. We'll get right into that as soon as we get back here. So, anyway, thanks for joining us, and we'll continue on with Brent uh, next time. So, we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.